Hello everybody. So it's been a week, um, but I wanted to try and start a series where I go through one of the tutorial questions each week, one of the questions that uh, you as students seem to find particularly difficult. And I've had a number of questions about this example. So this is an example which includes absolute values and an inequality, but now we have a quadratic. Previously we've looked at simply linear functions added together within absolute values. So this is a little bit different. So the, the way to solve this is actually a multi-step process and very often with a question like this you're not going to know the roadmap to go from here to the solution. But what we want to do is to use ideas of pattern recognition. What, what do we mean by that? Well, pattern recognition we mean we look at this and we see a pattern. The pattern we see is, okay, here's an absolute value. I know what to do with an absolute value. I don't know what's going to happen next, but once you've found the next, uh, the next line, then we can start to ask, okay, where do we go from here? Okay. So what do we do when we have an absolute value? Well, the first thing to do in general is going to be to write it as a piecewise function. In fact, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to write this, um, we're going to factorize the quadratic to start with. Okay. So in fact, this is equivalent to x uh, minus 3, x plus 1, absolute value, less than 1. Okay, so now actually let's take this object here and call this our function f of x. We're going to forget about the inequality for the moment, we're going to get back to that shortly. Okay, so what do we do? Well, f of x is equal to, well it's equal to x minus 3, x plus 1, when x minus 3 and x plus 1 are positive, or when they're both negative. Okay. So what are the regions that both of them are negative? Well, they're both going to be negative for x less than 1. Okay. So uh, x, less, sorry, x less than minus 1. So for x less than minus 1, this is negative, and this is negative, and therefore the whole thing is positive. Okay. Or for x greater than 3, this is positive, and that's positive, so they're both positive. Okay. However, from our definition of the absolute value function, it's minus x minus 3, x plus 1, when one of them is positive and one of them is negative. And the only place that can happen is between minus 1 and 3. Okay? So now we've got three regions. We've got a region from minus infinity to minus 1, where it's defined like this. We've got a region from minus 1 to 3, where it's defined like this, with an extra minus sign. And we've got a region from 3 to infinity, where it's defined like this again. Okay? So in fact, we're going to remember this, and we're going to use, first of all, just this definition. We're going to plug it back into the inequality, and we're going to see what happens from there. Okay. Okay, so what do we have? We know that for, and I'm going to write, I'm going to write it now using interval notation, for minus infinity to minus 1, or 3 to infinity, we have the inequality x plus 3, oh, x, sorry, minus 3, x plus 1 is less than 1. Okay? So in fact, let's expand this out. So now we have x squared, uh, what have we got? Minus 2x minus 3 less than 1, or x squared minus 2x minus 4 is less than 0. Okay? So now we have a quadratic equation and we want to ask when is this less than 0. Okay? So one thing to note is that this is a quadratic with a positive square power, so this is an upward parabola. Okay? So we're actually going to forget about the inequality again for a moment, and we just want to find the zeros of this. We want to ask when is, when is this equal to 0. Okay? So now we want to solve x squared minus 2x minus 4 equals 0. Okay? And you can all do that, and you plug it into the, the normal quadratic formula, and you find that x equals 1 plus or minus root 5. Okay? So these are the two zeros of this quadratic. Okay? What does that mean? Well, we know then we've got a quadratic that looks something like this. So this is our quadratic, and these are the zeros between 1 minus root 5 and 1 plus root 5. And we want to know when is it less than 0, when is the whole quadratic less than 0? Well, the answer is that it has to be between 1 minus root 5 and 1 plus root 5. Okay? 
So then this is solved. Or between 1 minus root 5 and 1 plus root 5, but not including 1 minus root 5 and 1 plus root 5 because it's strictly less than. Okay? It's not less, less than or equal to. Okay, very good. So now we've found the solution to this inequality, but we know that this is only valid, this, this solution is only valid in the re regions between minus infinity and minus 1 and 3 and infinity. Okay, so let's see what happens when we put those together. Okay, so now we know that between minus infinity and minus 1 and 3 and infinity, the solution is 1 minus root 5 to 1 plus root 5. Okay, so now what we need to do is to find the overlap between this and this, and between this and this. Okay? What do we mean by the overlap? Well, that's just the intersection of these regions. So we can start off looking for the overlap between this and this, and this gives us minus infinity to minus 1, intersection 1 minus root 5, 1 plus root 5. And 1 minus root 5 is less than minus 1, because root 5 is clearly greater than 2. Okay. Root 5 is greater than root 4, and root 4 is 2, and 1 minus 2 would be minus 1, so this is less than minus 1, so the answer to this is between 1 minus root 5 and minus 1. Okay. How about the other region? So we've got between, well let's actually take this region which we know to be further to the left than this, so we've got 1 minus root 5, 1 plus root 5, intersection 3 of infinity, oh, 3 and infinity, okay. and what do we have here? Well, this is just between 3 and 1 plus root 5. Okay. So now, these are the solutions that we found for the first part of the piecewise function. This and this. Okay, okay very good. So now we've looked at the first part of the piecewise function, which was defined in this region and this region, and we found that the solutions, when we overlap it with these two regions, give us these two. Okay? So now we can ask, what about for the other definition? Well, the other definition was simply minus x plus 3, oh, minus 3, sorry, uh, and x plus 1. And this is valid for between minus 1 and 3. Okay. We should really get rid of this because this is only for the first part of the solution. Okay. So this is the expression that we want. This isn't, a, isn't an equation or an inequality. So what we really want to solve now is x minus 3 minus x minus 3 x plus 1 less than 1. Okay. We can do exactly the same thing again. So we can take minus x squared. What have we got here? So this is going to be uh, minus 2x, so plus 2x, minus 3 becomes plus 3, less than 1, so we have minus x squared, plus 2x, plus 2, less than 0, and we do exactly the same thing again, we solve not the inequality, but minus x squared plus 2x, plus 2 is equal to 0, or we can write it as x squared minus 2x, minus 2, is greater than zero. Okay, so then we have the positive sign here. That makes it a little, little easier. Okay, so from that, now we want to solve x squared minus two x minus two is equal to zero. Okay, we solve that as a normal quadratic, and we find that x equals one plus or minus root three. Okay, now again, this time we have that this function has to be greater than zero. Okay, so now we have something that looks like, again, this, but now we have 1 minus root 3, 1 plus root 3, and now we want the quadratic to be greater than 0, so it's going to be for this region here, and this region here. Okay. So we've got the zeros, and we now know that the solution to this inequality is going to be between minus infinity and 1 minus root 3, and, so the union there, of 1 plus root 3 
and infinity. Okay? For both of these regions, the inequality there is solved. Okay? However, we're not quite finished because this union of regions here, this is only valid within minus one to three. Okay? So now we have to do the intersection of these two regions with this region. Okay? Let's look at that. Okay, so we want to find the intersection between minus infinity and 1 minus root 3, union 1 plus root 3, infinity. We want to find the intersection of that with minus 1 and 3, now included. Okay, so what's the answer to that? Well, in fact, minus 1 is less than 1 minus root 3, so the answer here is minus 1 to 1 minus root 3, union, 1 plus root 3, and infinity. Oh, no, Not infinity and 3, sorry. And three. Okay. This is the intersection of this region, which itself is a union, and that region. And we end up with this. Okay. So now we've found four regions. We've found this region here, this region here, these were from the first two parts of the piecewise function, and we have this. Now we can take the intersection of all of these regions. So the total solution is, the solution is the union of all of these regions, and we have one minus root five to minus one, not including minus one, union minus one to one minus root three, Union, 1 plus root 3 to 3, including 3, union 3 to 1 plus root 5. Okay. And if we take the union of these, in fact, so this then goes from 1 minus root 5 to 1 minus root 3, union 1 plus root 3 to 1 plus root 3. So this is the final answer to the quadratic equation. Okay? I'm sure that there are many other ways to solve this. Sorry, the quadratic equation with absolute values in an, in an inequality. I'm sure there are many other ways to solve this, but this for me is the one that makes the most intuitive sense. Okay? So take a look, try and work through it yourself using the same method. See if you get the same answers for all the quadratic equations and all the intervals and the unions and intersections. Um, if you don't, let me know in the comments and we can see if we can figure it out. Okay, very good. See you all soon.